Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's Macbeth, live from the Latvian National Opera, which I saw online on the Opera platform. The conductor was Martins Otsolins. The production was done by Viesturs Meiksans. The sets were done by Reines Suhanovs. The costumes were done by Marian Rols. The lights were handled by Kevin Wynne Jones, and the choreographer was Linda Mila. I was really excited for this particular production because aside from Tatiana Melichenko, who I've only heard by name only, I've never heard a great deal about these particular performers who donned the roles of Macbeth, Banco, and many other of these characters. So my expectations were quite high. And before I start talking about the singers, let's talk about the production. While it manages to make a great deal of its creepy atmosphere and its overall dark tones, and while it does a very great job of showing and not just telling, there are just times where the overall darkness and the overall dissonance of this production can be a little bit off-putting and I would have loved to have a lot more scenery, like we could have had a lot more mountains and a lot more natural resource to be found in the mix and a lot more landscapes. Mostly because whenever I think of any Macbeth production, I would also love to think of those Scottish landscapes which are very well known for their atmosphere and for their overall invigorating nature. But despite all that, it manages to make a great use of its creepy and daunting atmosphere. And one great example of showing and not telling is when we see a scene of Macduff's wife and two children running in a field almost about to get shot by a couple of assassins. And there was also another scene where King Duncan enters the house of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, and instead of just telling that Macbeth has killed off King Duncan, we see that he does King Duncan away. So there were some good things about this production, even though I am not really a huge fan of this particular production. The costumes were okay at best, but there were some costume pieces, mostly the wigs of Banco, Macdufo, and Malcolmo, which make me wonder, do these wig makers even know what they're doing to the chosen singers? Do they realize that those wigs make those said singers look really silly? Almost like I'm watching a throng of circus clowns and they just didn't really look good on them. I could have just wondered what was the wig maker thinking when he or she was giving these particular wigs to the singers of Banco, Magdufo, and Malcolmo because they looked really ridiculous and they just did not really sit well with me. But despite that one major dent, the costumes were just okay. Not really a huge fan of them, but they were just okay. So overall, I do have some rather mixed feelings about this production. On one hand, it makes a great use of its creepy atmosphere, and there are moments where the whole show and don't tell principle does come into play, but there are times where I'm not such a huge fan of all the costumes. So overall, not really a huge fan of the entire production and costumes, even though there were some good ideas in the mix here and there. But the singing was quite phenomenal from all the border. Starting off with our Macbeth, who was sung by Vladislav Sulimsky, and he has a very formidable, dramatic, baritone voice, and it's just my ideal voice for this particular Macbeth. And even for roles like Nabucco or Giorgio Germont or many of these great dramatic baritone parts. He's been very well known for roles like this and he is just in total control of that voice. He dominated this stage. He was a complete stage animal, helped with that rumbling, round, and rampaging, raging, dramatic 
baritone voice that he managed to let the theater ring out with such awe and his acting was so involving you could feel the madness in his eyes you could feel every moment where he fidgets and twitches you could feel every moment that he gets himself into he is really a committed performer and he does the role of macbeth justice with his dark round rich and rough dramatic baritone voice which he used to his great advantage and he was a very involving actor from beginning to end. Tatiana Melnichenko was a powerful Lady Macbeth. She started the opera with such a bang and she continued to stay involved with her character till the very end. However, there was one little caveat which was a teeny tiny dent to her overall performance. And that was her D flat from the Una Maquia Equi Totora aria. It sounded like a scream and it was kind of flat. But that's just a very, very small dent to pay in what is otherwise a very fine package that she managed to pull off. She not only had a very round and powerful voice, which she managed to make a great use for roles not only like Lady Macbeth, but also like Abigail and maybe Turandot in the near future, but she also has a great temperament on stage in which she manages to bring the role of Lady Macbeth to life thanks to not only her powerful voice, but also her intelligence on stage, and she was just able to make Lady Macbeth a pretty human character. She not only made her very ambitious and quite power hungry, but she made her quite the schemer and quite conniving and also quite human in a sort of way, making her all the more interesting and all the more vivacious on stage. She's definitely a singer I would really love to look out for in the near future, and if ever she comes here to Berlin, I will definitely look out for her and just sit my ass down on that chair and just listen to her awesome vocal performances from beginning to end. So overall, Tatiana Melichenko as Lady Macbeth was very fine all throughout, even though there were a few dents in her overall performance. But those teeny tiny dents were a very small price to pay in what is otherwise a very fine and grand performance. Romance Polisadovs was a very fine banco. Sure, there are times that his voice does sound a bit on the woolly side and there are times that it sounds like it kind of lacks a little bit of pizzazz because whenever I think of any basso who would sing a role like Banco, I would usually think of the greats like let's say Boris Kristof, Cesare Siepi, Nikolai Gyaurov, Carlo Cava, Nicola Zaccaria, Samuel Raimi, Ferruccio Furlanetto, and many of these other great bassos of the past. Oh, and lest I forget about Jerome Hines. He was a very great banco and an overall great basso in any single role that he appears in. With Roman Polisadovs, he was really good in terms of how he managed to sing, and it's a very fine basso instrument. It's just that there are times where he does sound a little bit woolly and there are just times that he sounds a little bit unenthusiastic, but despite that, he shows great musicianship and he does have a pretty noble bearing on stage, even though it was quite hampered by his costume. Sergei Polyakov was a very fine Makdufo, even though I'm not really a fan of his theatricality. There are times that he was kind of monotonous on stage, but his singing was otherwise really good. It's a fine spinto tenor instrument, and it has a very nice timbre to it, but it kind of lacks the additional meatiness of what I would expect from the likes of Carlo Bergonzi or Franco Corelli. It's a very good instrument which he has, 
but I'm not really a fan of his acting. And I do feel like he does need to emote a lot more when it comes to this particular character. But despite some of those caveats, it's still a very good package that he manages to give. And I'm sure that he will get a lot better in the near future. Raimond's Brahmanis was a very fine malcolmo as he managed to make a great use of his lyric tenor voice to bring this small yet very important character to life. He has great musicianship and he's quite handsome on stage, but much like his colleagues, the likes of Romance Polisadov's Banco and Sergei Polyakov's Makdufo, they were quite hampered by their costumes considering how they looked on stage. If they would have worn something a lot different, then I'm sure that they would have looked a lot better. But despite that, I still have to say that Raimond's Brahmanis was a very fine package and I can't wait to see a lot more of him in the near future. We even have some really great singing in the smaller parts, like Gunta Ceza's Lady in Waiting, which was a very fine lyric soprano voice which she managed to pour out. Arman's Sealing's Assassin, and we even have some really wonderful singing from Richard's Matsanovskis, Richard's Millas, and Viestur's Vitals. So overall, the singing was very solid all throughout, but my hugest kudos have to go to Vladislav Sulimsky and Tatiana Melnichenko, who are absolutely committed to their roles both vocally and theatrically, and the conducting done by Martins Otsolins was solid all throughout. Everyone went together from the singers to the orchestra and the chorus. There was no one that was left out as everyone collaborated and everyone just went together. So overall, while I was not a fan of the production or the costumes, and even though there were some singers that had some caveats here and there, I still have to give my great kudos to Vladislav Sulimsky and Tatiana Melnichenko for pulling it off with such flying colors. And if you haven't seen this particular production of Macbeth, on the opera platform, I highly suggest you do so as this transmission will end on December 10. So please go check it out. And for those of you who've seen it already, what did you think of it? Was there a singer that stood out to you? Did you kind of like the production? Did you not care about it? Was there a singer that you didn't really care for? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where I review Diana Dambrao in concert in Boston. So until then, have a great day, everybody.